Welcome to episode 125 of Outside the Circle, a podcast dedicated to new and upcoming country artists, musicians, and songwriters. Today's guest will be Kathleen Fee. We'll get to her in a bit, but first, I'm Ronnie, and here's Brian. What's happening, man? Yeah, we are on the countdown here in the Hopkins household. We got three weeks before the new baby comes, and... Uh, if it's anything how why it came why it came 10 days early so we could be like <laughs> days away <laughs> yeah which is uh exciting and frightening all in the same moment <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm sure i mean i guess you can't really ever plan you're only as prepared as you think you are right so like yeah. like even with why it and knowing what that was um I'm sure things are different still. So like, I'm sure there's some calm, but probably more storm than calm. I mean, I can't be the only parent, but like those first couple of weeks are gone for me. I don't remember anything from Wyatt from like the first couple of weeks. I don't know if it's the lack of sleep or whatever, or it's just like compartmentalized that I don't think about it or anything, but, um, (laughs) So, yeah, it's like, yeah, I'm ready for it until something comes up. And I'm like, I don't even remember this at all. <laughs> you know, but yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Well, yeah, that be. too. Now, <laughs> what are we, uh, three years out? So, yeah. so the, the things that you were probably like, oh, I have to remember this for next time. Yeah. <laughs> you probably have no idea what those were. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. It's going to be, it's going to be like a whole new experience, uh, even though it'll be my second run through. So, Man, yeah, we're excited for it. I know, uh, I know, Jamie is ready, and uh, so yeah, man. Otherwise, we are as ready as we can be. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so, kind of with that timing, I guess uh, we could also kind of throw out there that um, next weekend or next week is the week that um, the yearly week away that I go for the the camp conference. So. Uh, um, I'm assuming we're probably not going to put anything out next week just based on timing. So depends on what happens on your end. It might be a couple of weeks before we get anything. So uh, yeah. uh, everybody hang on to this episode because it might be a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah. We might have to do a, an emergency uh, Instagram live or something from the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's exciting. We're, uh, yeah, definitely counting down the days over there it's uh we're, we're getting there um but yeah i think as far as far as this episode this interview uh we had a uh, kathleen fee on you handled this one um i don't know i guess i sound i might sound a little better but i'm still struggling i, I missed this one from being sick and um i think last week's episode i was struggling to get through a sentence without coughing so we're uh, we're doing pretty good over here but um <laughs> kind of sticking with the theme we uh you know last week we had mary mcginnis on and she's uh from our neck of the woods and and kathleen fee as well so um you know staying with this tri-state area theme for for now all right everyone we're here today with singer songwriter kathleen fee welcome to outside the circle kathleen thanks for joining us today Thank you for having me. Yeah, as the uh, listeners may have found out already, that was not Ronnie doing the intro. So it's just you and I, and uh, I think we'll be all right. But, um, you know, we'd like to kind of start off from the very beginning. You know, where where are you from and, and how important music was in your household? Absolutely. I, I actually grew up in Clifton, New Jersey, and um, my parents are both from Ireland, and I grew up very entrenched in Irish culture, Irish music, step dancing, and um, my two brothers and myself started a family band called Celtic Cross, 
and uh, we performed mostly out of the New York area, although we did the festival circuit a little bit as well. And um, you know, I've, I've, there's always been music in my house. If it wasn't Irish music, it was definitely country music. I, I think the, the two genres are, are very uh, related mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. So uh, yeah, I just, it's music has always been a part of my soul, a part of my family. And um, I've been singing since I can remember. <laughs> You know that's good. I'm I'm kind of glad Ronnie's not here. I, I'm I'm the resident Irishman here in the uh, in the, the two of us, and uh, I I completely agree. I love you know the the Celtic side of, of uh, the Celtic music alone. Um, come St. Patty's Day, that's that St. Patty's Month, I guess is a <laughs> is a uh, big big thing in my household. You know, we're always oh, going yeah. to doing all that and. Uh, yeah, it's about the only time that my radio switches from country music is uh, is going to that. Um, we call it the high holy season. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I can, I guess, you know, were your parents, I guess your parents moved here from, from Ireland. Um, what, were they, you know, I guess it was only Celtic music. I mean, I, I'm guessing they didn't listen to country music over there. It was country music is huge in ireland and it, yeah. it's um it's still huge they have a, they're very still very much into show bands and mm-hmm. it's um it's alive and well and um it's similar you know the dancing is similar to the country dancing a lot of the same two steps and and kind of moves that you know i grew up learning dancing around the living room with my parents literally during snowstorms <laughs> and like music was just you know a big part of our our family my parents are from mayo and longford mm-hmm. and as a child we moved back over to ireland for a couple of years as well oh, cool. and then came back to new jersey yeah i mean you can you can you can draw the line or the connection between the Celtic music and country music with like, you know, the folk cousin, you know what I mean? So kind of, it all is in that same old family. Um, yeah, that's really cool. So from Celtic cross to turning solo and on your own, uh, path here, um, we kind of hit on it, but was there an aha moment that you were like, music is my career. This is what I'm following. It, It always has been. It really, you know, it's it's kind of who I identify as as a person as I'm a singer um and there was never really an aha moment it was always like this is what I'm always going to do and whether it was with writing with Celtic Cross and we you know we we had our own original music and um and then you know just you know COVID happened before COVID there was some sickness within my my band Celtic Cross so it was kind of slowing down we were dealing with some health issues and then COVID hit and then um I just you know I just got this amazing opportunity down in Nashville to kind of explore my own thing yeah I mean we could dive into that also but you know I'd also I guess you know that's kind of we can veer into that way so what was it like you know coming from the Celtic cross days of, of songwriting to now writing songs, you know, in the country mindset. Yes. I mean, I think I wrote with my fellow bandmates and there was like a certain comfort there, but it was always just us together Mm -hmm. and, and heading down to Nashville. I mean, the pool of talent is so immense and so, incredible um but it's still the same thing you're still like opening yourself up you're still just being yourself and 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 seeing who you gel with and it's still kind of the same same you know um exercise sort of thing yeah um yeah i could see that you know when you're comfortable with people i can see that it's easier for you to explore those like uh the dark and twisties i guess you can say and uh Um, moving to a new area. I don't know if you had any connection prior to, but moving to a new area and then experiencing, trying to experience those type of, same type of like intimate moments with people, it's got to be a little difficult and a little bit harder to kind of just dive into. Yeah, I'll tell you what happened. I was, um, I've spent a lot of time in Nashville in the last 10 years and I have an amazing pool of friends who are all incredibly talented musicians and they're in, you know, some pretty famous bands, but I was, I found myself at a a party one night and um, 
Alicia Hoffman, um, who's my producer on, on my EP, said to me, you know, Kath, that, that, that song you played for me that you just recorded, I think it's really great. And I, you know, now that your band is not as busy, I think you need to come down to Nashville and figure out who Kathleen 2.0 is without your band. Do you want to do that? I want you to do that. And I was like, yeah, I want to do that. So that's kind of how the whole thing started. And then, you know, a couple months later, after I got myself prepared, went down there and his his wife is Rebecca Lynn Howard who's an amazing yeah. um singer songwriter musician friend now um I had the opportunity to write with her the first day of like the songwriting you know time and um like you said we just kind of we hit it off and she was only supposed to be doing the one day of songwriting with me and then the first day we sat down we wrote glitter gold oh, wow. and it was just kind of magical and, and she just looked at me and she's like I'm staying on with you through this whole project I believe in you and this is we had a really good chemistry but you can't you know you either have it or you don't mm -hmm. and we just kind of you know I basically moved into their house yeah. for the like, for the two <laughs> weeks <laughs> Yeah, that's good. It's good to have that support system and then have that, you know, find that person that kind of gets you. And it's yeah. nice because, you know, you feel that investment right from right away from somebody mm -hmm. like that, where they're they're invested in, in not only you, but the project. And that, you know, adds to that comfort level for sure. Um, Absolutely. You know, I'd love to, you know, we're we're blazing through these, but um. Yeah, I mean, let's let's hear it. So, would you mind uh, would you mind introing it for everybody? Sure, I'll tell you a little bit how it's. We started, like you said, we were talking about um, getting comfortable with people when you're songwriting, and we were just actually talking about like the state of the world and the state of our 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 youth and like how you know everybody compares themselves to everybody else, and you know they look at Instagram and social media and, you know, they think everyone's life is so much better than theirs, but it, the reality is it's, you know, it's all filtered It all, you know, we're all in this together, but this is a song glitter gold is about overcoming, you know, those inner um, doubts that we all have and, and we're all in this together. And it's, it's a song about um, just knowing who you are and knowing that you're not alone.
All right. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about glitter gold. Um, obviously we hit on the inspiration about it, but let's dive into it a little more. So it's coming out on February 16th and, um, I just shot the video down in Adamstown, um, about an hour outside of Nashville. And I'm going to be releasing the video for glitter gold on March 1st. So I'm super excited. Yeah. The, uh, I'd love to hit on, you know, the, the song, you know, I, I love the song. I think it's great. Um, you know, in my notes, you did listening through it, you know, I had written down, you know, kids comparing themselves to Instagram and that filtered life and, um, you know, what, it, what kind of like wreaking havoc that's gotta be on, on, you know, children growing up today. I mean, we were fortunate cause it's like, you know, we were able to kind of ride bikes and like have fun outside and not have to deal with computers and phones and all that um and kind of grow into it where you know i'm noticing now like my three-year-old can grab my ipad and just like hammer through it and be like good man and uh navigate yeah and so you know i i can see myself as like you know a new parent when that you know the conversation starts to happen be like listen this isn't their real life. Like this is not, you know, how, how it actually is. This is just like snapshots and filters and how it, like they want their life to be portrayed. Um, so I love it. I, and I love the idea of that. This song is something that is, it's new. It's a new idea. You know, it's, um, it's not your stereotypical like country song, you know, that we've all heard on the radio a hundred times, just rewritten. Um, and I love the hope, hopefulness out of the song, like understanding that, like, you know, I'm, I might get pulled into the rain again, you know, that whole, that whole thing. I, I love it. And, um, it has a cheerfulness to it where it's like, I, I, it's, it's going to be hard for me to explain it. There's a cheer, cheerfulness to the, the music and the sound. Um, but it's talking about something pretty serious, you know, which is pretty, pretty good. It's easier to listen to and kind of absorb the, the message. Thank you so much. That really means a lot. I felt like it has a little Alice in Wonderland to it as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the glitter gold and sunshine and rainbows. And, um, but I, I think the, the, the deep meaning of it is the, you know, we're all on our own journeys as people. And, um, and I think we just all need to, res to respect that, that everybody has their own journeys, their own ups and downs, and you just have to go through that. That's just part of life. But just, I think the message is in the song is that you're not alone. Like we're yeah. all going through this. Yeah, no, it's great. And then, you know, that was the Ronnie Spiel, Spiel, ugh, sorry. Um, on the lyrical side, I, I always talk about the production side of it. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm an acoustic guitar player myself. And I'm always a fan of like an acoustic intro or an acoustic driven song. Um, and then you up the ante by throwing in that 12 string through the front. So I, <laughs> I love it. I gotta say it was one take. I was like, you know, it'd be really great. Like a good, like long guitar intro. And I literally was in like the booth looking at the band and, and he's like, what about this? And I was like, oh my, <laughs> I mean, that's Nashville for you. I yeah. just came, I like walked out of the studio and I was like, did it, tell me you got that. <laughs> Cause it was the first try and yeah. it would just blew my mind i was like yes i mean nashville is um it's so wonderful and it's it's just chalk filled with the most amazing musicians that don't have like big egos that they just get in there and like you know and if you don't like something they'll do it a different way and but the talent level is so incredible that it's um it is mind-blowing yeah. in, in the best possible way yeah i speak of it a lot um here on the podcast about like tracking sessions and that that type of feeling where like when that type of creativity is just in the room and it's just happening in front of your eyes and you're just like it, it is it's mind-blowing to watch um the caliber of like the musicians that can just pull things out of out of the air and be like you think it's something like this like mind readers you know and it's yeah. it's, it's the coolest thing there's no way to explain it um, I've tried many times, but, you know, unless you've actually been in that room and felt that creativity, you know, happen. Um, yeah, you're missing out because it's it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to explain it, but it's it is magical. Uh, you know, I made so many good, great friends that are just so talented and, and, and humble and willing to share, you know, their opinions and their creativity with you. It's, it's, it's been an amazing journey. 
um, yeah, the uh, so this is the first single off the, the debut EP, uh, also titled Glitter Gold. Um, what else can we expect to hear from that EP? So I, I'm thinking the second song is going to be a little bit more... Um it's going to be more as of a banger as, as my son likes to call it. It's a little <laughs> bit more Nashville. Um, but there's a little mix of everything on my EP. I, you know, I love, I love nineties country and like, you know, I'm been from New York and I have that, you know, Celtic rock background with my band. And like the one thing I didn't want to do is come down in Nashville and not be authentic. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to pretend that I grew up, you know, yeah. in in Tennessee because I didn't you know I, I love Tennessee but I didn't grow up there so I wanted to be able to pull you know a lot of of, of me into the music mm-hmm. and and be authentic to who I am as you know an artist so you'll get a little bit of a, of a you'll even get a little Celtic flavor in there in, in one of my tracks and uh but I'm they're, I mean, they're all my babies now, so I can't wait for them to come out. I'll be rolling them out in the early spring into the summer, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely look forward to that. And, uh, yeah, we speak a lot about uh, authenticity in artists also. You know, from a fan's point of view, when you feel that somebody is being authentic and not, you know, playing an act or so, you know, uh, I think it's – it's um, noticeable for sure. And when someone is authentic, it's a lot easier for them to grasp onto and be like, yeah, you know, you you can see a lot, especially here in the tri-state area, you know, not that many of of us grew up on farms and and did that whole thing. So it's harder. And, you know, Ronnie can speak to it. I actually did grow up on a farm. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Ronnie, Ronnie would be able to talk to it because he didn't, you know, he worked at a diner for most of his life and, you know, and did that whole thing. And, uh, I did that too. Yeah. <laughs> I worked at a diner. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's a Jersey. Big town diner. Yeah. And uh, oh, sorry. So, so he would he would definitely appreciate the fact that you know the, the songs don't have to be you know the stereotypical country you know setting oh. or, or or you know you know um, playbook say you know so no I'm I'm definitely looking forward to the EP and hearing more. Um, and I love the idea of throwing that little bit of a Celtic twist into it, uh, into the country sound. You know, like we said, you know, it's, it's part of the same family, right? So it works. Um, yeah. So I guess, you know, we can kind of get to, you know, what it's like to see you live. I mean, I'm sure, you know, a lot of folks saw you here in, in the New York City tri-state area. But um, what can someone expect to see out of a Kathleen Fee solo show? Well, I'm hoping to get the show on the road, hopefully um, into uh, late summer, early fall, and um, get a little tour together and um, play this new music. And just, um, you know, again, I've, I've worked really hard on it, and um, I'm just excited to get out there and, and and do my thing. And, I mean, I've been doing, you know, live performances my whole life, so I'm, I'm well used to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. Um, you gonna throw any uh, Celtic cross covers in there? I mean, you never know. One or two, maybe. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. And I'm sure my bandmates will be, you know, there with me, and I'll I'll get them up and play as well. Oh, like you cool. know, yeah. If they if they're in the audience, especially my brothers. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, you know, you've performed a ton of iconic stages, at least here in the tri-state area. Um, Madison Square Garden, PNC, which is uh, our hometown premier venue. Um, we always like to ask, are there any favorite, you know, tours or, or, or moments on stage that really grab you? Uh, this past December 4th, I performed the national anthem down at the for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Arizona Cardinals football game. Oh, nice. And um, that's the second time I've, I've done that, uh, the anthem down at Pittsburgh. But you know, sixty four thousand people, and in the middle of the fields, <laughs> as the players are coming at you, yeah. kind of stands out. It's one of the most. Um, it was definitely the largest stage I've ever stood on, especially completely by myself, yeah. um, singing a cappella. So uh, it was a thrill. It was exhilarating. I was delighted when it was finished, and yeah. and um, so that was probably the biggest stage that I've I've ever performed on. And I didn't mess it up, so I'm pretty yeah. happy. <laughs> you know, that's one thing that you always, it's, it's a, uh, 
when you in the unfortunate event that someone were to mess up the national anthem, there's always those haters, right? I've I've sang the national anthem. It is not an easy song to sing, folks. And though you've heard it maybe a million times in your life, the words can be forgotten, and it is not easy to sing. Um, it's very rangy. It goes up, you know, the whole thing. Um, so conquering those nerves, yeah. especially in a big stage like that. And like you said, you have, you know, 200 plus pound dudes running onto the stage and that energy is just being yeah. exploded off the roof, you know, it's got to yeah, be and they crazy. Were, they were, yeah, they were blaring like Bon Jovi as like the team came on the field and I'm sitting there going, I had to keep my note. I'm like, oh, because <laughs> All I kept thinking, because I was out there for about 10 minutes before, like, I actually started to sing. Yeah. And I had, like, a little pitch pipe. It's like a little harmonica. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have it with me because I had my terrible towel. And I just was, like, so, like, I was out there for five minutes. And, like, I saw my brother who was on the field. And I, he saw me and he knew exactly. And he's, like, <laughs> you need the pipe. And I'm, like, yes. So my handler person who was on the field with me ran to the side and just to get that note, because there's no going back right. if you start on the wrong key. Yeah. You cannot save yourself. No. Oh, man. Yeah, that I mean, <laughs> nerves alone would eat me alive in that moment. Um, yeah. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I'm sure Ronnie's going to kick himself for missing this one. He's uh, He lived in Pittsburgh for a long time and also a Steelers fan. So, yeah, cool. sorry about you. <laughs> um, the uh so the ep will be released by the time of the airing of this interview um as we kind of wrap up is there anything that else you want to touch on coming down the line for you no you can check out um social media i'm kathleen fee music um, my website is www.kathleenfeemusic.com. You can catch me on Facebook, Kathleen Fee. And um, I'm excited to share this podcast and and uh, share more of my music as the months come on. Awesome, Kathleen. Yeah, I know. I know, you know, myself, I'm excited for the EP. I can't wait to hear it dive into that and uh you know following along on your journey but i definitely appreciate you you know putting up with me solo tonight and uh appreciate you for coming on the show thank you for having me i hope to come back when i release my next one all right so that was our interview with kathleen fee and uh yeah once again brian thank you for knocking that one out and uh it was cool to kind of hear her story a little bit and you know being being in a band and then now putting out some solo stuff especially as being her first kind of real uh attempt her first real release in the solo world so uh yeah great uh great job there yeah that was fun you know uh and speaking of themes i mean we're we're not that far out of uh saint patty's day so yeah. you know if you like kathleen's um solo stuff you know check out her you know the the Celtic cross stuff that she was in prior to. Um, but yeah, this, this album is going to be cool, man. I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see, you know, what else she has coming out and uh, to really follow along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we played gl glitter gold in, in the, the interview there. And, um, you know, I feel like I, I feel like my go-to line is if that is any indication of the rest of the album, it's going to be uh, pretty damn good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, not much else I can say other than uh, you did a hell of a job once again, and um, it's going to be a, be good to see Kathleen kind of take on the, the solo world here, and yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, once again, we want to thank Kathleen Fee for coming on Outside the Circle. Be sure to follow her on all of our social media and music listening platforms. That does it for us this week. Um, as Ronnie said at the beginning, we're going to take next week off and uh, we'll keep you posted on <laughs> when the next one will be. Hopefully uh, we will get another one out to you, but, uh, you know, stand by. <laughs>